Hello and welcome to the Believe Crew podcast. The business is you. I'm Jamie White, founder of Believe Crew and your host. Let's jump right in. Welcome to today's podcast with The Business Is You. I have Kim here from On Brand Designs, and I would love for you to tell us, Kim, a little bit about what you do and really, more importantly, why did you get into it? Sure. Yeah, so I am a brand strategist and brand designer, so I create logos, websites, everything in between to help build a brand. Um, And I got into it because I didn't want to be a starving artist growing up, so I went into the digital realm and started my career in packaging design and from there learned all different skills and really fell in love with typography and doing a line extension of brands and so uh, led into starting my own business mostly because I like the control aspect of it (laughs) Um, but also wanted the freedom um, to run my own business and build the career that I wanted. That's awesome. We were actually just looking at some personality assessments today, and there's one that looks at the motivations. And so I have um, a utilitarian motivator as a primary, but then there's this individualistic motivator. And apparently that is often someone that needs to own their own business, like individualistic. I just need to do something my own way. And and there are like six motivators. So kudos to anyone that doesn't have individualistic and does not have that, you know, overwhelming urge to just I got to do this my own way. I got to do this Is my this own way. Is this a test that you took or how did you find this out? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's part of the disc assessment that my husband does. And um, so then it includes the motivations behind the behaviors. And there's something about when we understand our fears and our motivations, like I, it's true. I have utilitarian, like I'm so into, you know, not wasting our resources or not wasting our time. It used to be when my husband and I were first married that if we passed Culver's or I don't know if you have Culver's there. Do you have Culver's where no, you are? But I, we don't, but I've heard of it. I've been to the Midwest where they have it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, which is um, very good. It's a thing. <laughs> Quick trip and Culver's. Like those two are, you know, we're all loyal fans. But anyway, if I, if we passed it, I would have a really hard time going back and turning around, you know, like I would be like, nope, you got to pick the next restaurant. You know, I finally realized that that half a block turnaround was not going to change my life, but that's how ingrained it is. That's how motivational it is for me. So it was really um, powerful for me to learn that. And then now to understand that this individualistic one, not everybody has it. It's okay. If we don't have a a powerful um, entrepreneurial motivator that's driving us. Yeah. I'd be curious about it because right now my motivations are my vision board that's up right here and I've got the house, the boat on the water. Those are my my obvious motivations of why I want to run my own business and build my own, you know, my own wealth and legacy and, um, you know, all the selfish reasons, but also all the other reasons to give back. And I'm a huge giver. Yeah. Um, that's part of the, the people pleasing side of me. Um, but I, I enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah. Understanding what you were just speaking about is the other thing that we've been working on with people is helping them uncover their spiritual gifts. And if you have giving, that is a spiritual gift. Like I, it's not one of mine. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm thankful for those that do have it. So um, there was something that you said early in your introduction, you mentioned about the starving artist and that you didn't want to be a starving artist. So there, there was a part of you, I'm assuming in your heart that you knew I'm an artist, like I identify as an artist, but yet I do not want to identify as the starving artist. Can we dig into that a little bit? Yeah. So my background growing up my whole entire childhood was creating crafts and painting. And, you know, back in, you know, the early two thousands when I was in high school, um, or graduate high school in 2001, it was, you know, everything you saw on TV is these painters that didn't make much money. And that's when the world started to really turn to computers. AOL was a thing. And I was like, well, I'll get into digital stuff and I'll combine the two so that I can build, you know, a career. And at that age, I didn't know I wanted to run a business yet. I just knew that I wanted to make a lot of money. And painting to me was just something that like I took French <laughs> so that I could paint along the Seine is <laughs> my my idea but you know then your picture of that is like a somebody with like a, a hat putting dollars in and you're not really surviving um 
And so, but now to this day though, I still paint. I do pet portraits on the side for fun. Um, so I still, I still get involved in the fine arts, but, uh, it just didn't seem ambitious enough for me. Now, now looking back as an adult, I could have made a lot of money painting. (laughs) I love that you just mentioned that because ultimately what I found, and I want to hear it more from you is that whatever we're called to, whatever is in our heart, we really have the capacity to create whatever, but we don't Mm -hmm. realize it at the time because of the the limiting things that we think. What, what comes up for you that when you say like, now that I look back, I realize Um, if I had worked at it more, if I went to school focusing on that and if I really honed in on my skills right now, I'm only good at painting pets um, or some abstract stuff. But if I had marketed myself as that way, you know, it's not because it's not just the painting. It's not just the talent. I mean, I see people that I'm like, well, I can do better than that. But Mm -hmm. it's the way that they position themselves and market themselves in the industry. So if you're having galleries and, you know catering to celebrities or or getting yourself out there in front of people, you can make a lot of money as a, as an artist. Um, But I never developed those skills. I feel like enough, but that is my goal. And part of my why too, is I do love what I do in the digital aspect, but my plans are to grow this Mm -hmm. business, have it be semi self-sufficient and paint on the side for more of a hobby type. Maybe I'll sell a few things here and there, but um but that's like my retirement plan. <laughs> right, right. So. But what I'm hearing you say is that from the perspective you're coming from today, it probably takes just as much time. Like we have this idea that graphic design is a safe job or that mm-hmm. creates safe jobs and there's security in that versus being an artist is like a starving artist. But mm-hmm. if you're building a business and you're not getting a job, chances are it takes the same amount of time to build either business. Like how much time did it take you from idea? Like, Oh, I could do graphic. And you, you had a job doing graphic design. Right. And then you transitioned and said, okay, I want to do a business. How much time did it actually take from idea of, I think I want to become an entrepreneur instead of a job to, to replacing your income. And what, what would have it taken if, if you would have done your art? Um, I think if I would have done my art, it would have just, I would have had to learn the the business side of it still, I think, Mm -hmm. or had some sort Mm -hmm. of guidance in that way. Because in the path that I did take, you know, the expectations was you graduate, you get a job in corporate, somebody else is, you know, telling you what to do and giving you the paycheck every week. So there's no risk involved. There's no extra um, things that I needed to learn. There's no extra skills. It's just, I was, I learned how to do this one task in a way and, or talent and develop that. But it was very, um, yeah, I guess less risk is, is you didn't have to learn a lot. So, and I think that's where I got kind of creatively stunted. Um, is when I was working for corporate and I was doing exactly what somebody told me to do. Um, so the freedom was, was missing. And that's kind of how it led into being my own business. But yes, if I had to hone down these skills to learn how to paint, I think starting off the gate, what job is there out there? I didn't know, like, you know, marketing, like what job is, am I going to have right out of college if I paint? Um, Right. Right. So that's where the lack of security comes into play because you would have had to immediately learn all the business stuff, branding, niche, you know, and, and you would have had to fail a lot because that's part of the business process. PR to put myself out there. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's, it's a whole other thing because yeah, there's no, you can't go down the streets of New York city. Like I did and go find an agency that you just paint. Right. (laughs) Right. So it's, yeah, it's the business part of it that I wasn't clear on or how to even navigate that. Um, so, and then I just end up falling in love with what I do because I help businesses grow every day. So, um, well, and you're still using the same skill set, right? It's just with a different medium. It's digital instead of, I'm assuming, paintbrush yeah. <laughs> and actual paint. Yep. Yep. 
Although there's there has been times that I've done a little bit of painting to add to an element, mm. but it's very, very rare. Um, I have lost some of the drawing skills. I actually have like a drawer full of post-its when I art direct my team and like logo ideas or concepts and I just hold it up to the zoom screen. I'm like, here, do this. So I've been saving all my little post-its of sketches and, you know, quick, quick ideas. So, um, but yeah, it's definitely a combination though. I, I need those skills still. I'm just not as, it doesn't come to me as quickly. Like I don't have the, I have all the paints and things and I have the beads and the jewelry and the crafts and I've, I got into resin art but my time is focused on my business and the digital art because right now that's what's making me money. Mm -hmm. So if we go into that a little bit often, okay, if we move from starving artist, we still think about creatives as not necessarily the same as like say an accounting brain or a financial brain. And I mean, we start to realize like, oh, I have to hire that, right? Just like I have to hire a branding person sometimes, like whatever it is, that's not our specialty. But did you find it easy when you left corporate and had to go into business in terms of the the things that you didn't know that maybe didn't come naturally for you? I wouldn't say easy. Um, so I'm, I'm launching a course right now called the Profitable Brand Designer. And it's, I, the reason why I created it is because I spent, I'd say, about the first two and a half years of my business in this freelancer mode. So throughout my career, I always did side projects. So people would come to me and it would be my freelance. Um, I had a freelance name. It was never a LLC or incorporated or S-Corp or anything, but learned how to be a freelancer. And so when I started my business, those people that had been with me for years, freelancing kind of came with me. And then word of mouth developed more, but I didn't, besides learning how to use QuickBooks, I didn't know how to run a business and even how to price properly. I like every time I would get a project, I would Google, how much should I charge for this? You know? Um, and for a good solid two and a half years, I would have this same conversation on repeat where I was like, I want more. I have a, a, a legitimate business now, but how do I make it a legitimate business? and still not seem like I'm this freelancer person that nobody will take me serious or won't pay me enough because I'm just, you know, a, a freelance graphic designer. So it wasn't until I finally invested in my business and someone, a, a, um, a coach approached me actually on LinkedIn. And I still, at this point, never really listened to podcasts, never, um, thought about all the extra things that you would need to run a business. I did, I just was creating what I did. I was creating graphics and, um, you know, tirelessly setting up proposals for every project. It would take me days to send a proposal. And so finally investing in my business, it was kind of like the jumpstart to, oh shoot, I'm way behind the curve in this. I need to learn how to, if I, if I want this to be a business, I got to learn how to do it. So invested in more coaches, courses, hiring a team, um, and learning how to lead was a big thing. Like, like giving up a little bit of that control so that I can delegate to and grow things and automate things. And, um, so, so basically this course is what took me lots of time, money condensed, for a creative person who doesn't know business, who didn't go to school for business, who doesn't know that there's more to this um, creative field that you can offer more. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, it's, it's all my learnings condensed. <laughs> so, which I well, wish I had for myself. <laughs> yeah. What you're speaking to is uh, close to my heart because what I believe today is that oftentimes we don't need a degree and maybe I'm stepping on toes with this, but there's someone out there, there's a course out there, there's a mentor out there that if we know what we want to learn, we can learn specifically that. And and maybe that takes away the idea of, you know, going to college and exploring what could be possible or meeting those people that are also interested in the same things. But I think mm -hmm. there's other ways to find community and find, especially in the online world today, like it's just yeah. that the landscape is changing. Yeah. I mean, I teach myself every day, even design stuff. If I'm yeah. like, hmm, how do I do this? I'll YouTube or, you know, YouTube it or look it up and 
learn a new skill each day. I mean, I basically taught myself web design. I didn't start doing web design until after I was on my own. Um, so it's, you, you can teach yourself skills. Now, one of the other things that I'm offering is VIP upgrades where designers can bounce ideas. That's the one benefit that I did find working in corporate is I didn't learn a ton in school, but when I worked in the, in these big offices, I would have people who had way more experience than I do standing over my shoulder, like literally on my computer over me, guiding me, showing me what to do, how to like work with graphics and type and, and the programs and teaching me stuff. And I think that's the only thing you lose today being all digital is that like, I would turn around and see somebody doing something on the screen. I'm like, Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Let me see. Um, so I want to provide that for younger designers or even older designers that want to start their own business, that there's more things to learn and it doesn't have to be me going through the course. It could be me like critiquing you on your logo, like bouncing ideas off of it, using my experience um, to kind of make up for that lack of being face to face. That's really important. And I, I can feel that, you know, like when you're explaining it, there are things that, um, that journey of deciding, okay, I can learn this on my own. I can do this on my own. But then when you can't see your peers and what they're doing and how they're doing or, or learn from people next to you as you're mm -hmm. practicing, <laughs> like, like you said, I love it when you're like, wait, I Googled, you know, how do I price this? <laughs> like, hashtag jealous. You know, there are some companies yeah. that can't Google it. So I love that you even did it. And, and chat GPT wasn't a thing back then when you were no. <laughs> starting. <laughs> no. None of it. Um, but it's, you know, I do like to teach too. And that, that's not something that I thought I'd like to do. But as I have a team now and I'm helping them learn new skills so that they can help me, um, it's super fulfilling. So one of, uh, one of the girls that works for me, every time I teach her something new, she's like, oh, another master class by Kim. And I don't even mean to. It's just, you know, they're not they all work digitally too. So yeah, it's something that I never thought, but I guess it comes hand in hand with art directing. It's just, it's, it's what it is. So, um, and I had to do a lot of work too internally to understand that sometimes just because my hands aren't literally drawing that line, but it's my concept, it's still my work. Yeah. That was a big step that I had to take to, um, make sure I was producing and as a, as a, company putting out work that I would do myself as well. Um, so that's been, that's been a internal learning curve for me. So are you almost saying that using digital art versus doing it by hand, almost imposter syndrome? I'd say imposter syndrome. It's also, I think it goes to that back to that level of control and wanting to make sure that, um, it's still me your name, your art, mm -hmm. being true to you as you develop yeah. this for other people. But to grow, I have to allow other people to help me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I loved what you've shared already about your growth path and what you didn't know and what you've had to learn. And so if somebody else is thinking about becoming an entrepreneur and, and they're in the beginning phases at what point do you have to start thinking about leadership and leading a team? Is it something that you can even learn or think about in the beginning or do you have to wait until a certain point? What do you I think? don't think you have to wait. I think I had, cause I had the idea. I just didn't know how to get there. So if you start to have the idea, don't wait to reach out for help. I think that's mm. the biggest thing I didn't, I didn't know what to do. So I immediately reached out to people that knew what to do. And that was the biggest turning point for me was investing in that help and investing in somebody who's gone through that path or has a different skill set than I am to teach me those things. That's um, beautiful. And it, that was the biggest thing. It's like I, and then I started to, you know, do the self-improvement books, um, the podcasts, like the course wasn't even a thought in my brain until a year ago. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just, and that was because somebody else advised me that I should do it. Yeah. Became a thought. And then all of a sudden it was like, wait, I think I could turn that thought into reality. Mm -hmm. 
So was it easy? How much time did it take to go from idea to course creation? Oh, it's still not quite done. So <laughs> this... that's part of my perfectionism too. It's like, I don't want to release until it's perfect, until yeah. I've got the audience for it. Um, also having a service-based industry or business, that work does come first. And that's one thing that I would always recommend to anybody making a course, make sure that you're able to fund it and that you're able to have a business and have it as an extra piece of I'm thankful you. that you pointed that out because someone told me yeah. not that long ago that for those million dollar courses that you see online that people are creating, it takes five years and 150,000. Now, I don't know if those numbers are correct, but I was at least glad to have a number and time because otherwise overnight, right? Well, I think five, five years is a long time. <laughs> 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 but maybe it's to become that full, you know, to have the fullness of it, to have it selling at the level you want to sell it at, you know, like that kind of thing. It's just not an I overnight. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. And, you know, you could do many courses too. And there's some people that are like, just get it done, get it done. But I also want to make sure that it's of value and that it's going to be worthy of the the number that I'm putting on it too. And that it's going to actually help people. Right, so, right. um, and I, I'm building it in a way that it, okay, yeah, maybe five years because I want it to be sustainable and evergreen, but maybe always adding to it or adjusting. So, um, but yeah, a year of just had the outline, it's just getting everything in there, then recording it. Yeah. And now it's launching it. So that's a whole other aspect to a course that nobody talks about. Unless you have that audience automatically, you're not going to you know, have much of a return or reach that many people. So I'm considering this whole launch right now as part of the course. So I'm working on my landing page for my lead magnet. I'm working on the sales page for the course. I'm getting more comfortable being on video, which is another aspect to, you know, finding that audience and getting the message across and showing up on video for the actual course. So there's a lot of things that go into it that is not just the actual material mm -hmm. when you're creating course. So, um, I'm really thankful you're sharing this. There's someone that I know <laughs> that, um, created courses for people and she sold 30. I don't remember what, um, what length of time that was over, but what I'm saying, just to be clear, is that she created courses for other people. And so the product that she was selling was course creation. When I asked her how many of those products sold, so how many of those people sold their courses, the number was zero. Oh. The launch is a whole nother part of it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually just did a cohort to learn how to launch it because I'm like, okay, now I have this course. What do I do with it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and that was a cohort. I know she came up with it quickly, but it wasn't a course. It was a cohort that we were every week kind of meeting. And it's something that she does on repeat all the time for her clients. Yeah. So, but the way that this is put together, I also didn't want it to be, um, I've taken courses and things that I don't finish. And that's because being a creative person and a visual person, I get stuck on the super long videos. I get stuck on the worksheets and tons of homework that those things is what I end up is the reason why I end up failing. So I specifically created it for somebody like me. Wow. So there's not a lot of worksheets. There's a lot more ideas and tips that you wouldn't have known and yeah. short training videos. Yeah. It reminds me of when I first invested in my first coaching program and the whole process, I have no idea how I signed up for it. It was probably some social post that I put my name into that I don't remember <laughs> doing, you know, and then landed on a phone call that I don't remember how I got there. It's like, wow, there's a funnel and I don't even know I'm part of it. And, um, and then when I agreed to say yes to it, my first 36, uh, 3,600, not 36,000, $3,600 investment I, it was one of those moments where I was like, I know I have to say yes. And I don't even know why I don't even really know what I'm buying. So again, mm -hmm. proof that, you know, if the, if the energy of whatever it is that we're creating is right and if we're attracting the right people, they don't even know like the perfection thing. It's not even a thing, right? Because I was buying and I didn't even know what I was buying. And then 
in the end, it was really, really good that I had to pay the 3600 because I freaked out. I don't know if it was, I mean, technically, if I look back, it was probably that investment in myself of like, oh my word, I could become this. If I start, mm -hmm. you know, practicing today, I, this could actually be a thing someday. And so I had to pick, they wanted you to pick, do you want to, do you want to go down the coach training or do you want to go down the speaker training or the trainer training? Well, I knew it wasn't the trainer, <laughs> but I couldn't decide between coach or speaker. And I got so landlocked, like I got so stuck. I wouldn't even open the computer to, to log into the program. But because I had paid the price, mm -hmm. I finally did. And so there's something to that too. Like when you say that I'm creating a course that has value and I want to be able to charge and, and show up for that level of value, mm -hmm. there's a price that we have to pay for the investments that we're making because otherwise we might not show up for ourselves. That was my experience. Yeah. Actually, in my first course, it was a little bit, of, it was a hefty price. And I just, I said yes, because I felt the moment I need something like yeah. I, you are telling me everything I need to hear. <laughs> this is what I've been saying. Now, I never finished this course. There is a lifetime access. So I always say I'll go back to it. But I don't regret not finishing it. I just felt that it was overwhelming for me. But without that course, I wouldn't have been on the path right. to get there. Right. Because it made me realize, okay, this is good information. Maybe not perfect for me. Let me seek something that is perfect for me. And so that's another reason why I thought, oh, I should make a course. Because out of all of my searching for things, there was nothing that was catered specifically to me. Now, there's other designer courses, but catered to my specific needs at the time, there was nothing. So I had to reach out to multiple outlets to get the, you know, what I've condensed, yeah. but yeah, I didn't, I, it was just overwhelming for me and that, that, but that was helpful to know that, um, right. And that's, without it, I wouldn't have been where I am. So I, you know, that's the other price life. that's, that's paid. Like I've attended conferences this last year and what I get from them is that the speakers are not that good. Well, the reality is that's my calling. Right. And I just wanted to believe that there were other speakers out there. I didn't need to get on stage, you know, but then I keep going to these conferences that have bad speakers. I'm like, why, <laughs> what am I doing to attract? And it's like, Jamie, it's because there are spaces for you to speak. Maybe not every stage is for you, but there is a space for you. And, and so I needed to pay to attend the not good ones so that I could see that. Right. Same thing mm -hmm. as you, like if I can't find it or if I am paying for this. And I'm like, wait, this isn't even like, it's our calling. It's no yeah. one else's calling. It's our calling. Yeah. So, but who knew when I signed up for that course, I'd be creating one myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Well, Kim, it's been so good to chat with you. I'm thankful for everything that you've shared and I'm thankful that you've been willing to be vulnerable and tell us what does it actually take, you know, to, to leave corporate, to start as an entrepreneur and then to do something crazy like adding additional income stream, but being willing to make those investments along the way. Is there anything yeah. that you feel has been left unsaid today? No, I just, I think that it's running a business. It's the most rewarding thing ever, but it's also not for the faint of heart. So. <laughs> Truth bomb. <laughs> this is random, yeah. uh, a random <laughs> truth and specific to Wisconsin, but apparently I'm going to say 2021, I don't know the, the year specifically, it was either last year or the year before, 49% of the businesses started were, mm -hmm. were started by women in Wisconsin. And we are actually the lowest state to have minority businesses, which women fall into that category. So there are so many women that are starting businesses, leading businesses, and we don't, ha we don't lead in the same way. And so we can't mm -hmm. always look at the same books that are out there, the same people. And so we're having to learn it and fail and try. And eventually, you know, that, that process and that system will be, uh, there'll be a little bit more resources for us, but right now we got to stick together. Yeah. Well, I think the whole power partner idea too, is like yeah. aligning yourself with people that have the same goals, whether it doesn't matter what industry you're in, just the same goals. And yeah. that's been a huge game changer as well as connecting with like-minded women. Makes total sense. Thank you so much for your dumps today. Thank you. <laughs>